We are back for our third installment of our Rocks to Gold series. And what I've done uh, so far is I've taken the gold pan with the concentrates and I've poured them into that coffee filter and let them dry. So it's been a couple days, they've dried out really nice. There's our material. Here's our scale. And I have an unused coffee filter here, which weighs right about one gram. So I'm going to weigh the coffee filter with our material on it. That weighs six grams. So I'm going to uh, take some flux, mix it up. Put it in our number four crucible, which is going to be a little too big, but that's okay, it'll work. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, put that on top. I'm going to burn the coffee filter on top of the flux in the crucible, and then I'm going to mix that material into the flux. So again, I'm going to use our Legend Refining Flux. It's just a pre-mixed flux. Um, it has potassium nitrate in it as our oxidizer. That'll help oxidize some of the sulfides and a little bit of junk that's left in there. And I'm going to use uh, five times the amount of flux as there is material because I want to get a, a nice, good uh, smelt and have plenty of oxidizer to eat up all the sulfides and junk in there. So we have six grams of material, and I'm going to mix up, uh, I'm going to pour 30 grams of this flux into that crucible. All right, so I'm going to tear the scale, and I'm looking for right about 30 grams. So there we go. 31 will work good. So I'm going to take that, put it in a crucible, and I'm going to take that coffee filter. put it down in there and I'm gonna burn the coffee filter off now because the coffee filter is carbon and the carbon uh, counteracts the oxidizer because the carbon wants to soak up all the oxygen so I'm gonna burn that off and get as much carbon out of there as I can there will be a little bit of ash residue um, but then the remaining stuff that's left after the burn I'm gonna mix it all in and get it nice and homogeneous and then uh, put it in the kiln okay here we go I'm gonna Burn the coffee filter. And I'm just going to let that all burn down to ash. We got her all mixed in there. And yes, this crucible is way too big for that little bit of stuff, but it's the smallest one I have. Um, so we're going to have maybe a tablespoon worth of stuff once that gets all melted down. But we'll pour it into our cone mold and see what we get. All right, we just did our pour. There's our little tiny bit of stuff that we poured in the bottom of the cone mold there. So let that cool off a little bit and see if we get a little gold button. So I just tipped her out of the mold and chipped the slag away and you can see there's our little gold button. And there it is in better focus. You can see it didn't quite all combine. There's the big piece and there's another little tiny piece over here and there's another little BB there. So I'm going to knock the the big pieces out of there and then I'll crush up and pan the rest to make sure I don't oh, there we go make sure I don't miss any uh, little gold BBs but we'll get that knocked out of there and weighed and see what we get so this is a great example of why you should always save all your slag and then re-crush it and run across a shaker table or uh, some other concentrator because you're going to get little gold BBs stuck in your slag and you don't want to lose those. Now one of the reasons we got some gold BBs in ours, and I, I don't think I got it quite hot enough, I was trying to do three or four pours there and I tried to do them real quick and I think this one uh, I waited till the last one and it cooled off a little bit. So if you don't have your material really hot it uh, stays liquid but as you pour it into the mold it uh, cools down real quickly. 
Also, we hardly had any material here. I think there was only about, what, 30 grams worth of stuff we put in there, including the gold. So um, there wasn't a whole lot of mass, so it cooled down real quickly. And then the third part is our conical mold really isn't designed for a little tiny amount of material like that. It's designed for a full number 10 crucible. So there's not really a, a cone at the bottom. It's, it's, it's pretty flat um, for that little bit of material. So it, it also didn't collect all the material right now at the bottom of the cone. But... Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our slag, and this is actually one of the first little rock crushing things I ever made. This is just a, a pipe nipple and a pipe cap, and then I have a, a long bolt. So we're going to put our slag down there, crush it. I have a 20 mesh screen. We're going to screen it 20 mesh into the gold pan. Anything larger than 20 mesh, we're going to put back in there and crush through a 20 mesh screen. So um, we're going to do that, pick out all the little gold BBs, and then I'm going to take some uh, an oxy acetylene torch and uh, melt it all down into one single button so we can get it weighed. Here's our material through a 20 mesh screen, and I'm going to just swirl that around in the pan, and uh, we should see the little gold BBs showing up. So here's those little gold beads that went through our 20 mesh screen. Put my finger down here for scale. There's some really tiny ones in there. So it's always a good idea to keep your slag and crush it and uh, liberate the little gold BBs that uh, get stuck in the slag if you have any. And normally I'd just put this in my bucket of slag and crush it later, but since we're trying to get a kind of a percent recovery on this stuff, I wanted to crush this a little bit and um, we can melt it all down and see what we get. All right, so there's all our gold and BBs and a little bit of slag still attached in the bottom of our melting dish. So I'm going to uh, add just a little bit of borax to that to help it all get nice and fluid and um, absorb some of that slag and try and get the gold all in one single button. And then we can get it weighed. Okay, here's our scale. we got our little gold button here after the melt. Two grams. This is a little reloading scale that we use for some of the smaller weights we have. It's all in grains. So I'm going to take our little gold button. 10, 20, 30, 40 grains, a little less than 40 grains. Let me get it zeroed here and we'll figure out how much it weighs. Okay, I got our level again. We're at 30. 8.6 grains. All right, so now we can calculate our percent recovery, and this is obviously assuming that that whole button is gold, which it probably isn't. There's probably a little bit of silver mixed in, but um, for now, this is what we got. We ended up with 38.6 grains was the weight of the button, which equals 2.38 grams, and we're going to do it both ways. We're going to do it the American way and the way everyone else in the world does it. So we get uh, 2.38 grams, or for the American guys, we get uh, 0 0.0765 troy ounces is how much that little button weighed. Our original uh, buckets weighed 107 pounds, which is equal to 0 0.0535 short tons, because a short ton is 2,000 pounds, again, the American way. So 2.38 grams over the amount of short tons we had, we ended up with a value of 44.5 grams per ton, or in ounces, it's 1.43 troy ounces per ton. So uh, we did pretty good, about an ounce and a half. Again, I got assays off that thing up to two and a half ounces, so we're, we're in that range. This was a fun one to make. I, uh, not often do you get to take it all the way from digging the rocks out of the ground to gold in your hand. So this is a fun one. Hope you guys liked it, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again.